and then the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. We'll just have a quick sermon, five minute sermon on today's gospel. And we have today's gospel on the screen. It was a very long one, to, uh, chapter 11 of the Gospel of St. John. But we all know uh, the gospel of today, it's the miracle of raising of Lazarus from the dead. Just quickly, we want to wanna share some contemplations on today's gospel. So basically the story is, we know Lazarus had a sister, two sisters called Mary and Martha. And they were so close to our Lord Jesus Christ, he used to stay with them in the home when he goes uh, to Bethany. And they were very close to Christ. And they loved him so much. But we see something strange happen. We see that Lazarus, he became very sick. Then the sister sent, if we go down to the, sorry, have numbers, the next, the verses which says, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. So we can see on the screen here, the two sisters sent our Lord Jesus Christ saying, behold, he whom you love is sick. They were telling our Lord Jesus Christ that Lazarus, the one that you love, is sick. That shows how much they knew that our Lord Jesus Christ loved them. They knew that he loved Lazarus so much that he must do something when he's sick. I'm going to stop quickly at some points and then just contemplate on it. Do we know? Are we really sure? Are we confident that God loves us? Each one of us. Do we feel that God actually loves me? Do I feel that I'm loved by God? Individually, not as a whole. Individually, each one of you personally, do you feel, can you say that, can you say when something, you know, when you're in trouble, can you say, God, the one whom you love is sick. Can I say that? We should be all saying this. We should be all saying with confidence that I know that God loves me. Whether I love him or not, that's a different story. But I know for sure that God loves me. We see something strange from here. All they said is, Lord, behold, who, he whom you love is sick. Did they ask him to come and heal him? We can't see any request here. They didn't say, come quickly and heal him before he dies. They didn't say that. Why is that? It's because they trust in God. They say, God, we'll just let you know. FYI, for your information, he's sick. Whatever you do after that, that's up to you. We leave that up to you. We leave that up to your wisdom. We leave that up to your love. How many times we actually tell God what to do? How many times we go to God with our agenda and tell him, God, this is what I want to do. Please do it for me. Or please sign here. Please stamp this for me. I've got my agenda and you just, I want you to tick it for me. But he, they said, God, this is the problem. They just put the problem before God and let him deal with, with it at his own time, in his own way, because they trust in God, because they love him. We need to do the same. We need to put our problems in front of God. Many people write their problems and they put it here on the altar. That's putting it before God, saying, here's the problem. The solution comes from me. I'm not going to dictate to God the solution. I'm not going to dictate to God how he handles the problem. I trust in his power. I trust in his love. He will deal with it according to his own wisdom. I just need to stop and stand and watch how God will interfere. But we see something very actually strange here. We know that God loves Lazarus so much. And Lazarus loves him so much. We go down and says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So it's very confirmed, it's very clear that it said that Jesus loved Lazarus. Okay? So if you know that someone is sick and you love him so much, what do we expect from Christ when he told him, Lazarus is sick? He should have what? He said he loves him so much. He should have dropped everything and ran to Lazarus to heal him. He loves him. What does the next verse say? So when our Lord Jesus Christ heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. That's very strange. So he took his time. He's sick there, don't worry about him, I'll stay two more days. That's very strange, isn't it? Expect the other ones, because we're running away. I have to come to him quickly. But no, our Lord Jesus Christ has different ways of dealing with things. He wanted to stay so he can die, 
so he can reveal his glory. So it will be a miracle. Sometimes we want answers on the spot. I tell God, there's a problem. I need a response. I need an answer quickly. God can delay. God can just pretend as if he didn't even hear us. He can just ignore completely what we say. That's what we think. But he doesn't do that. He hears everything and he knows everything. But according to his wisdom, sometimes he acts quickly. Sometimes he delays. Sometimes he as if he doesn't care. But we know for sure that he loved him. He said that. We need to have that trust. We need to have the trust in God's timing. We need to have the trust in God's care for us. And we see later on that after when he went, after he finally went, he found what? He was dead for four days. He was dead for four days. It's too late. Too late, four days. It would be a stench. His body would be decomposed by the fourth day. It's too late. There's no hope anymore. But we see something very strange here. We see that when Martha, his sister, went to greet our Lord Jesus Christ, when she found that he's coming, this is what she said to him. Yeah, that's fine. She said, Lord, now Martha said to Jesus, now, Lord, if he had been here, my brother would not, my brother would not have died. If you were here on time, he wouldn't have died. He's already died four days ago. But did she say it's too late? Go back, there's no hope. Look at this next verse. But this is what she said. But even now, now, four days later, he's dead, he's buried, he's decomposed. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Wow. What is that trust? What is that faith? Her brother is dead in the tomb for four days. She said, even now, I know that he can do something. Do we have that trust? Do we have that faith? Sometimes things to pe appear to us hopeless. It's a hopeless case. You know, there's no hope anymore. You know, that solution could have happened, you know, a week or a month or a year ago. The situation is still the same. Nothing changed. What's going to change now? It's too late. It's already buried and decomposed. It's too late. But look at that trust. Look at that faith. But I know that whatever you ask, even now, we need to have that trust. We need to have that faith. And we know that our Lord Jesus Christ loved Lazarus so much. And God, He is not being insensitive. He's not ignoring them. But He actually, we see later on that... If you keep going later on down to where He actually went, up to the time where He went to the tomb... He asked him, where has he been laid? And he said, what? In the tomb. So he went. They said to him, come and see. So our Lord Jesus Christ went and to the tomb. What did our Lord Jesus Christ say, did? Jesus wept. God cried. Our Lord Jesus Christ cried. That's a very strong. This is the shortest verse in the whole Bible, by the way. This is the shortest verse. Jesus wept. Two words. But how powerful is that? Jesus wept. What? Why? Because in his humanity, he wanted to show us that he loved the resurrection. The resurrection represents our humanity, our weakness. And he wept because this is the end of man. This is the end of the body will corrupt. The body will die. And this is a corruption. Our Lord Jesus Christ wept for our sins and wept because he loved Christ. And this shows us that God is actually caring for us. God cheers in our sorrows. Whenever we go through a difficult time, don't think that God doesn't care. Don't think that God is insensitive. He doesn't react with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ deals with you. He's with you every step of the way. He feels for you. When He's sad, He's sad for you. When you're crying, He's crying for you. Because He saw the people crying and the sisters crying. So He wept. It says, and He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. He felt sorrowful. He felt sad. And He wept. He's sharing in our sorrows. He, sh he shares in our sorrows in, in our rejoice. So always be assured, rest assured that God feels what you're going through, understands what you're going through. He's actually going through step by step. Sometimes we don't feel Him. Sometimes we don't see that clearly, but we'll see it later on. But we need to have the trust and the faith that uh, the sisters had in this case. Glory be to God forever and ever.